So once again, welcome to this program. My name is Diego and I work for the Historic Districts Council. Today we have the pleasure to have uh, Mirtha Kulon, um, who is an Honduran born community activist who has worked with migrants from Central America. And she's been very involved in protecting the history of the identity of these migrant communities. Um, so the outline of this presentation is that I'm going to give an overview of um, what a cultural landmark is. I'm going to provide a few examples, a few definitions, and then we're going to move on to specific examples of uh, Garifuna um, landmarks. So for those who don't know, the Historic Districts Council is a um, community-centered organization, and we work with groups across the city and we help them achieve their preservation goals. Um, one of our programs is the Six to Celebrate program, which, uh, in which we, we work with six different neighborhood groups each year and we help them achieve uh, the preservation goals, their preservation agenda, and some of the activities that we conduct through this program are walking tours, uh, different programs and basically we help different community groups to get um, clear understanding of how landmarking works and we also provide them uh, technical assistance our knowledge and our guidance. So um, today we're going to be talking about the uh, cultural landmarks and first I want to start by providing a definition of uh, what a cultural landmark is. This is a definition provided by the National Trust for Historic Places. And it says, recognizing cultural, the cultural significance through landmark designation illuminates the history and experience of diverse communities, allowing us to learn from this history while also informing how we protect the representative historic character and fabric. A building or historic district's period of cultural significance maybe sometime later than its original design and construction. As a regulatory agency, it is important to understand why buildings are significant to ensure their physical features that best represent their significance are treated sensitively. Um, so, so this definition was provided by the um, National Trust for Historic Places and Something very important to highlight in this definition, I think, is the fact that um, a cultural landmark illuminates the experience of diverse communities. And as we we're going to see in the later examples, a cultural landmark is related to the events and different um, events in, in history and the identity of different communities. And in these places, um, there were significant events that helped uh, a community advance their, their history and their identity and, and their culture. Um, so, but, but I also think this definition also raises one of the biggest challenges of um, a cultural landmark, uh, because these, uh, definition mentions that a cultural landmark is important to a specific community. So if we consider that, uh, you know, different communities have lived in different areas of New York City, um, I think it, it may be a little bit ambiguous for certain communities to understand the cultural significance of a specific place if we are highlighting only the significance that that place has to a specific community. Uh, and this is because uh, what, what is significant to a community may not be significant to another community. So as opposed to highlighting um, a place for its architectural features, there is a, a, clear, a more clear understanding of what uh, an architectural significant building is but highlighting the cultural significance of, uh, of a building may be uh, a little bit ambiguous. Um, <clears throat> so I also want to give an introduction of the Landmarks Preservation Commission and what they do in the city. 
So basically the Landmarks Preservation Commission is the largest municipal preservation agency in the nation. And they're responsible for, protect, for protecting New York City's architecturally, architecturally historical, historically and culturally significant buildings and sites by granting them landmark or historic district status and regulating them after the designation. So I think it's it's very important to have this in mind because um, uh, the Landmarks Preservation Commission is the, the agency that is, is, is gonna have the ultimate decision to designate buildings as um, um, landmarks. Um, so one LPC criteria for landmark designation is a place that has value as part of the development, heritage, or cultural characteristics of the city, the state, or the nation. And I'm, I'm going to be providing a few, a few examples of uh, previous designations that were related to the cultural significance of the places that I'm going to be talking about. And it's important to mention that uh, these are just examples. So we, we are not providing um, like, um, definition of what a cultural landmark is or what the guidance of designating cultural landmarks is for, for the Landmarks Commission. These are just examples. And from these examples, we can have a clear, a better understanding of what uh, a cultural landmark is. So the first example that I want to mention is um, Stonewall. Um, during the designation, important features were called out, uh, and these features, features helped to tell the story uh, of these like, events that, that happened in, in, this, in this place. Uh, for example, on June 28th of 1969, um, an early morning raid on the Stonewall Inn was met with active resistance forcing the police to retreat into the bar and setting up confrontations and protests, which continued for the next few days until almost midnight, Wednesday, July 2nd of 1969, with the Stonewall often at the center of these events. So um, the Stonewall was considered um, cultural landmark because of the events that happened in this place, and also because of the um, subsequent um, events and uh, you know consequences that happen after after all the riots and all those events that occurred in this place. Um, for example, within a few months uh, of this confrontation, um, in direct response to Stonewall, several activist organizations were formed in New York City, including the Gay Lesbian Gay Liberation Front, the Gay Activist Alliance. The radical lesbians and other organizations. So, so I think it's important to note that a cultural landmark has had a, a very important um, um, influence in the development of a specific community. In this case, after the events, after the riots, different organizations were were created in response to to these events, and. I also wanted to mention a few, an example of the uh, LGBTQ plus landmarks story map. And this is a story map which was done by the Landmarks Preservation Commission. And all, all the places that were mentioned in this map um, could be considered cultural landmarks because of the uh, important events and the cultural uh, significance that all these places represent. Uh, for example, <clears throat> the James Baldwin residence. Um, this is the most significant surviving building in the United States associated with celebrated novelist, essayist, poet, and civil rights advocate, James Baldwin. This building was Baldwin's permanent American residence and family headquarters from 1966 until his death in 1987. Um, so, um, in um, looking at previous uh, designations and places that could be considered cultural landmarks because someone important lived there, 
I think it's important to, to take this example, to consider this example and the fact that it was designated because um, it was the permanent residence of James Baldwin, meaning that he lived a considerate amount of time in this residence. So uh, for that reason, it has um, uh, cultural value and cultural significance. And moving on to different uh, examples, um, I, I wanted to mention the Pepsi Cola sign. I think this is a really interesting example of um, a cultural landmark. And in the designation report, it was mentioned that uh, its prominent seating and its frequent appearances in pop culture have made it one of the most enduring and recognizable icons of the, on the, of the Queen's waterfront. It's one of the most notable icons of Queens, and although it enjoys enjoy many protections, it is it's really most appropriate that it has also become a New York City landmark. And um, also, the um, designation report mentioned uh, its uh, relevance to the um, advertising industry at the time and how uh, it was an icon to the neon signs and uh, and I think um, in this example. I wanted to include it because uh, it uh, illustrates that um, places that are that have significance to a very specific kind of time in history and also um, can also be considered cultural landmarks. And also, I, I wanted to mention all the ways to preserve and celebrate cultural landmarks. Um, one of these ways is uh, listing on the New York State and National Register for Historic Places. And while listing on the National Register does not protect a site from demolition or alteration, it can be an important step in recognizing um, its history. Um, there can also be non-regulatory designations, like a plaque for specific sites or listings, um, for example, in city laws and place matters census. Um, if you have ever had the chance to go to city lawyers, place place matters census, uh, you'll see that the, the places that were listed in, in this website are primarily cultural landmarks. And you'll find places that are that were relevant to the um, Latino history, the music of Latino uh, culture and and I think it's a really interesting resource to, to take into consideration uh, to learn more about cultural landmarks. Um, also, non-place-related uh, non non, non -place -related commemorations like oral histories, archival exhibitions, or public programs like this one. And I, I think this kind of uh, public programs or oral histories are very important because they create more interest in the public. They raise the um, question of what cultural landmarks should be preserved and why they should be preserved. And, and so I wanted to give this very brief uh, introduction of cultural landmarks before we dive into uh, Garifuna places. So Garifuna places are places that are related primarily to Honduran, the Honduran community in New York City. And uh, Mirtha Colon, who is uh, an activist in this community, she's going to be giving us an overview of different places that are could be considered relevant for this community for different reasons. So welcome, Mirtha. Um, I'm going to... I'm going to share your uh, screen that has your presentation. So one second. All right. Thank you very much, Diego. Thank you uh, for the uh, invitation and the uh, opportunity to share um, this uh, space with you. 
and with all of the um, participants um, as well. Um, we have been uh, Sagaripna people living in the uh, city of New York um, as early as the uh, 19, 1930s. And um, I believe that uh, the beginning of the 1930s, the community was very um, small, um, but eventually um, it grew up. Uh, so in that growing up, so they have been some places um, where we have had some presence. Um, so I will go to the uh, first. Uh, no, that's not the one. That's not the one that. That's not the one. Is the that this is not the one uh, that I send you last. This Diego, this is not the one. This is not the one. The, no, this is not the one. Okay, one second then. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes, this is the one. So thank you. So um, I was saying that we've been here since the um, uh, since 1930s, and uh, but the community went and 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 has grown uh, tremendously here in the city uh, of New York. Uh, so one of the um, the first slide. One uh, of the places um, that um, um, was called El Cangrejero, or meaning crabs, but that was that was like a, I, I won't call it a nightclub, but it was um, if any activity will happen on Saturday and Sunday, it will happen there. And this was located at 112th Street and Seventh uh, by Seventh Avenue. The building is still there. Uh, it's just a, a two floor building. So it was on the second floor um, that people will go and they spend their, the afternoon if they will have any party, if they will have uh, any birthday, anything, they will go there and, 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 and meet there. And then they will call each other to meet there. That was, um, this was in the, uh, uh, when I got here in the 19, in 1969, the place was already, um, uh, here, I mean, they were using that place already. The next slide. Um, but I believe that uh, uh, somehow uh, it was like for people, people will come, go there. Um, they will come from Brooklyn, Queens. They will come from the Bronx and they will go there to 112th Street. But I guess that um, the people from the Bronx, they don't wanna go uh, to Manhattan. So they decided to have their own place here in the Bronx. And this was at 174th Street and Boston Road. It, um, the building also is still there. It was on the second floor. And I believe the last time that I went by, the name uh, Club Lempira is still there by the door. Uh, even though that there are uh, other business there, but it seemed like they didn't take it, they didn't take it out. So it's still there, um, the name of the, um, uh, of, of the, name of the club. And the person who um, Miss um, uh, Sonia, Reverend Sonia Roches, at that time she wasn't a reverend, uh, so she was in the uh, business of uh, uh, promoting um, um, uh, between the community those musicians, those singers, those people who want to sing, who are into the uh, music business. She was promoting them, so that was one of the reasons why. 
uh, then she uh, rented that place uh, there on the second floor. And it, uh, it's, on, uh, it's also um, a two floor building. Uh, so it's, uh, it was on the second floor and the name is still, is still there. Um, however, the, uh, thank you. No, um, the third is fine, the third is fine. Third is fine. However, the uh, place at 174, uh, that was placed uh, for, let's say like if drummings, if um, uh, people want to play drums, um, that was used mainly for drumming and dances as well. But for if you wanna be like, um, you wanna do a different kind of, uh, 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 of activity related also to, to nightclub, to dance, then you will go to the Club Cubano Interamericano. So um, the Club Cubano Interamericano uh, in the uh, uh, 1960s, uh, he in the Bronx was one of the, uh, we could call it the best for the Latino. So we will go there and we will also rent the place um, to have an activity uh, also there um, mainly. And it was very, very uh, used by the, uh, uh, also uh, the community at that time. Um, but also uh, there were some other people who want to go like kind of um, um, uh, you, and use uh, the horse point, the other slide. The next slide, uh, who will use the horse point palace. Horse point palace, the uh, Club Cubano Interamericano is located at Prospect and 156 by, uh, by the corner of 156th Street and Prospect Avenue. And uh, I, I believe that it was recently closed because he was there for years, even, even though that he wasn't, uh, he was not being used, but it still was there. The building is still there, but I believe they're using it for other things now. It's no longer the Club Cubano Interamericano. And then uh, for, uh, there were other people who want to do probably different than Club Cubano. And then uh, the Host Point Palace was also um, a very nice uh, place um, located in Sunny Boulevard and, and, and the corner of 163rd Street. So that was another place also that uh, uh, it, uh, it was used also uh, by the community to gather, um, to have their dances. Um, uh, um, and, and, and also it was used by the community and it was known by used by the community. And also um, uh, mingling also with other people, with other uh, let's say like um, um, Dominican, Puerto Rican people, I think Dominican, they were not that, that, that as much as now, but they were already also here. So we became friends and then we were like sharing also um, the spaces, uh, particularly at that, uh, at that time, um, the population of the Puerto Rican um, uh, community, it was very high in this area uh, of the Bronx. Uh, so we did, um, uh, we were able then um, to share um, those spaces, to rent the spaces from them, um, uh, for them also to support us uh, as, as, as well. Next slide. And um, Van Cortland Park, Van Cortland Park, um, it was not just to uh, go and have a picnic on a Sunday. Van Cortland Park is because our um, countries, uh, they are very um, popular with the soccer games. So Bancotland Park was used for the, it was the only park that was used uh, for a uh, soccer game. But I believe that uh, the attraction on Sunday was too much that the neighbor began to complain because there were too many people going to Bancotland Park. And uh, so at that time, um, we have another uh, um, a slide that uh, I don't have them in order that uh, we went then to uh, what we call park in Brooklyn that I will show you the slide later on, but it's not really a park. It was, it, it, it's not really a park. It was um, those spaces that they use 
uh, playground, what they call play, playground. There were a lot of projects there in Brooklyn uh, by uh, Linden Boulevard, um, right off the corner of um, uh, New Lux Avenue in Brooklyn. So that was another space that instead of going everybody to Van Cortland, then they will go to Brooklyn to that other, um, to that other space. Uh, next slide. Uh, later on, uh, we were able to um, create here, but uh, recently, I'm talking about probably 30 years ago, um, the Central American, um, Central American Parade. Uh, so uh, it, it, uh, the parade takes uh, Sony Boulevard. It was first from, from 180th Street and uh, all uh, Sony Boulevard and entering to Crotona Park. Um, now is from East Tremont to Crotona Park. So this is one of the events where we attract yearly before the pandemic, uh, we were attract uh, 4,000 to 5,000 people to Crotona Park. But, but Crotona Park has been uh, since uh, 1930 something when Garibna people arrived to New York has been a special park because they live around the park. They were rent around the park. And uh, if they have to meet, if they have to, whatever they have to do, they will do it in Crotona, in Crotona Park because even their apartment will be around Crotona Park. But this is one of the latest uh, picture uh, of the um, event at Crotona Park of the uh, Central American Parade. Uh, next. Nowadays, we're not longer going to um, Van Cortland because everything that was happening in Bar Cortland now is happening in Ferry Point. Uh, Ferry Point is uh, by uh, Trognex, uh, Trognex Brick and uh, is under Trognex um, Ferry Point. So in Trognex, uh, Trog uh, in Ferry Point, if you go nowadays, if you go on a Saturday or a Sunday, but particularly on a Sunday, a Saturday, that you go to Crotona, uh, to Ferry Point, you could find from 3,000 to 4,000 people in, uh, in, in Crotona, part, uh, in Ferry Point, whether that they are dancing, whether that they are uh, um, uh, singing, uh, playing soccer, you will find from 3,000 to 4,000 people uh, on, a, on, a, on, a given, on a given Sunday. I, and it could be, from Sunday, I mean Saturday, from Saturday to Saturday. It could be from Saturday to Saturday. Um, it, especially at five, six o'clock in the afternoon, you will find that amount of people uh, in Ferry Point. Next. So we also have some churches. We also have uh, some, uh, some, some churches, um, even though that, um, Catholic religion predominates in the um, uh, community. Um, however, we had two uh, churches and one is the um, um, Garifuna Church located in Brook Avenue on 141st Street. Uh, I believe the church recently closed because the pastor retired. And this is a uh, Reverend, um, uh, Celso Jaime, uh, who went to Mexico, um, um, sent by his parents to study uh, medicine. When he came back, being a doctor, he didn't want to be a doctor. He wanted to be a pastor, so became so he built his church. So this was um, uh, his church, and there was another um, building, uh, two or three, four building along uh, uh, to the uh, side of the church where he used it for a shelter and for a pantry and shelter uh, for a, big, a woman victims of domestic violence. And this is uh, right uh, between 100, uh, and, uh, for, uh, 41st and 142nd Street at Brook Avenue. Next slide. Uh, so the other Evangelical Garifuna Church is located in Manhattan. And this, this is uh, run by um, 
uh, Reverend from Belize. And that one is located at um, 20, 25, uh, 20, 2522 Adam Clayton uh, Powell Boulevard in, uh, in Manhattan. Next. Um, as I mentioned, um, the community has been predominantly uh, Catholic. So one of the churches that uh, we use it in the past, we use it was uh, John uh, Chrysostom Catholic Church located at 167th Street and Ho Avenue. And um, the, the saint of Honduras is uh, the Virgin of Suyapa. So the first um, few years, and I could say that it went probably even to 10, 15 years celebrating uh, the mass uh, um, on uh, February the 2nd, uh, the date of the Virgin is celebrated. And we went into, um, so it was celebrated in this church until they um, removed it from this church by the same community and took it to uh, St. Patrick Cathedral. Uh, nowadays it's, um, it's being done at St. Patrick in Manhattan but uh, it began here at St. Um, St. John uh, Church in the Bronx. Next. We also um, very familiar with St. Thomas Aquina um, a Catholic Church. And we are very familiar uh, because they were the one who embraced us when the Happy Land fire happened. Um, they, and the mass for Happy Land it has been for this past also 30 years, 30 something. It has been uh, on an every year basis. It has been celebrated as an, um, uh, St. Thomas of Aquinas Church. Uh, so we also became very, very familiar, and very uh, close to the church. Next. Um, this is one of the restaurant also that I, um, uh, I think is from 1996. 90, 96, 97, that this picture was taken. And the picture was taken because uh, we um, uh, celebrated here in the bronze, um, one of the uh, 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 assembly of the Central American Black Organization. So we had people coming from all over uh, Central America. And so we went to meet um, at this restaurant. The restaurant was so small that we can't even fit inside of the restaurant. Um, the name, uh, the person in charge of the restaurant is this lady, um, the one who has something in her hand sitting at the front with glasses. Um, so she, she's the owner of the uh, place. Her name is Jolie. Uh, but Jolly, she wanted a bigger place than this one because people want to use the place not only to go and eat, but to dance as well. And the place is, uh, you know, very small. So she moved from there and she went, but uh, did not move the name of the, uh, of the restaurant. She went to a place where there was already another name and the name was Los Azules located also in Prospect Avenue and 156th Street. And uh, there is a new uh, uh, restaurant now who does not uh, owned by Garifuna people, but uh, owned, I believe that the owner is from Honduras. Um, it's called Seis Vecinos, but it's the same, it was the same place. Next. Uh, yes, um, Los Azules is the name of the place now. Next. So we also um, we also um, are, are used a lot uh, St. Mary's Park, um, even though that the use of St. Mary's Park is because our population has grown, uh, but the, the Honduran parade began at St. Mary's Park. The first parade, it was from St. Mary's, it went to Pro up to Prospect Avenue. Um, so it went, I think it was done for two or three years that way. And then it was moved from there 
uh, to Sunny Boulevard and East Tremont and going into Crotona Park, as I described before. But it began at St. Mary's by St. Mary's Park. Next. Um, there was a bakery of Gary owned by Garifuna people right at the corner of Brook Avenue and 149th Street. And the, the bakery was there for a couple, a couple years. And um, uh, the, 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 the owner of the bakery decided to close it, but it was there for a few years, a Garifuna bakery, but as she called it um, on the um, God's great power. That's how she called um, um, the, the, the bakery. Next. So I already mentioned Linden, Linden Boulevard Park, that it was not really a park, it, it's a playground. There are a lot of projects in that area. So the playground was very big. Um, so because there were a lot of people going to Van Cortland and then there were a lot of issues happening with the neighbors in Van Cortland. So they came here to, they went to Brooklyn um, to uh, Linden Boulevard. But now everybody from everywhere come, uh, come uh, they come to Ferry Point. Everybody will come to Ferry Point. Next. Um, the, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Murphy Valentine also had um, a show that for many years he called it the Central American show. Uh, before the pandemic, uh, then he changed the name of the show and he called it the Central American TV. And this is at Bronze Net, which is located at the uh, Lehman, Lehman College. Uh, and he's been there also for years, uh, presenting about Garifuna lifestyle, uh, Garifuna culture, Garifuna history, um, and other communities um, as well. But he's, he, he was there for, I don't know if he's gonna go back or not, but I know that he's not active um, right now, but he was uh, caused by the uh, pandemic. And this picture, I believe that he's been taking, was taken probably around uh, uh, 20 years ago. Um, Mirtha, someone, someone is asking on the chat, if you could repeat the name of the Virgin that represents the Garifuna community. What is it? The name of the Virgin that represents the Garifuna community. Uh, it was mentioned on the slide of um, St. John. Uh, the, so name, the name of the um, of the virgin that represents the right? name of the virgin, a uh, virgin of Suyapa. But virgin of Suyapa, we do not, as a Garifuna people, use virgin. What we do is depend on the country where we live. In Honduras, for example, is uh, La Virgen de Suyapa. Suyapa's uh, virgin, Suyapa. In, um, in, in Guatemala, they, whatever the virgin is Guatemala is, in Belize as well, depends on the country where you're coming from. Uh, but within the community, we, we, we participate in the, um, in the Catholic churches in each one of the countries also where we live it, where we're from. All right. Um, uh, how to spell Suyapa is a S U P A S U Y A P A Suyapa. Next. Okay, this was this was the um, the bakery. This was the bakery um, at the 149th Street. Um, next, uh, the the name of uh, the name of uh, Rainis is 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 nice spell appropriately. Uh, Bill Rainis Park. This is located in Longwood and Dawson by Longwood and Dawson Avenue uh, here in the, in, in the Bronx. That picture, that picture is a weekday that you go there by five, six o'clock in the afternoon. 
you will uh, you will see that amount of people. But if you go there Saturday or Sunday, you will see a lot of people. And then Waporo is the name in uh, in in Garifuna of a uh, uh, of a boat. And because the park has a shape of a boat, so they call it Waporo in Garifuna. So in in uh, we didn't even, I, 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 I learned recently that the name of the park was Bill Rainey's Park. I didn't even know, and I'm sure that many Garifuna people, they don't know that it has a name because we call it Waporo and everybody. Only, you know, we, we, we say, are you going to Waporo? Are you coming from Waporo? Everybody uses Waporo because it has the shape. And um, the people who begin to uh, go to this park, they were the Garifuna people from Guatemala. So there are other people also who identify the park as, oh, you're going to the Guatemalan park. They also uh, uh, identified that the people, they were the first one to go there. But now they, you could find people from Honduras, Guatemala, Belize, you find them there uh, in the park. Next. And then there is another, this is not a park. This is like, um, uh, is a, is a Crotona, Crotona, Crotona Park. It's a Crotona. It's not a park. This is between 175th Street and Sonning Boulevard. 175th and 176th uh, Sonning Boulevard. The building across is the um, Social Security building. There across is a Crotona um, Parkway. That's how they, uh, the, the street. Uh, there is uh, um, between uh, the other street, be, uh, the, uh, the, the big street is Sonning Boulevard. The other street is Crotona Parkway. So it's between uh, Sonning Boulevard and Crotona Parkway, but it's not a park. But apparently a person from one of the um, Garifuna city of, of, uh, as well of, of, in Honduras is called Trujillo. So apparently a few people from Trujillo begin to go there and meet there and they call each other to go and meet there. And all of a sudden, the, 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 that place uh, becomes so uh, huge that on Sundays, on Sundays, you could find even 500 to 600 people there, meeting there. And, uh, and, and, and cooking and selling food to each other and with music there. And, uh, and, and that was on every Saturday and every Sunday, you could find that amount of people, not anymore, because um, and there was a building that was built um, across a street there uh, uh, between the, um, I mean, uh, across the street where the uh, parkway is. And then it was, uh, they can't be there anymore. So they move from there and they go to the Waporo, the, to the um, Billy's, uh, Billy Ray, Rainey's Park, or they go to Ferry Point, they go other places, but they're not longer going, going there. Next. And uh, also in 1969, when I arrived here, the um, funeral home that was used by the community. It was called Rivera Funeral Home. And this was in Bathgate Avenue and uh, by uh, right off the corner of East Tremont. Uh, but then it has been also closed for the longest. It's now longer there. Um, but they, we are using now, uh, next, uh, we, are, we are using the uh, Ortiz Funeral Home. But we use them all. We use the one at uh, Westchester Avenue, off by Castle Hill. We use the one at, um, by Grand Concourse, by Fordham Road. There is also one in Manhattan, Broadway. We also use that one in Broadway. But the one that is used very often is the one at Sunning Boulevard and 149th Street. And uh, and I know that there are there is more to say. But from the, it came to my mind that this was the more like kind of uh, uh, um, that I could put together. Uh, but there are more places. But this these are the ones that is used uh, that is used um, more frequently and that has been used for years um, as well. 
um, talking about the um, Trujillanos Park, um, the Crotone uh, Parkway, they moved from there. And right now, um, the place where they are right now is there is a, there is a playground under a bridge located at a, a, a hundred, 174th Street. There is a bridge at 174th Street. And so they meet there. I've never been there, but I've been told that you could find like a thousand people there on a Saturday and on a Sunday right now. Right now. This is what's going on. And they are there with their music, with their everything, with their drums, with their food. They are there uh, at that place right now. And um, and that's about it. And I'm happy to answer any question that you may have. Thank you, Mirtha. This was very, very informative. Um, if anyone has any question, please feel free to unmute yourself. I, I do have one question, Mirtha. Um, so as, as you know, as maybe some people uh, in this uh, beautiful know, we are in the Hispanic Heritage Month. And uh, um, some of the places that you mentioned are relevant to different um, Hispanic communities, like um, the Hans Point Palace is very relevant to Puerto Rican uh, culture and communities because uh, you know many uh, musicians uh, from Puerto Rico performed here, and because there was a very big uh, Puerto Rican community living in that area. And so I wanted to ask you, Mirtha, if you think there there is a shared uh, history. Uh, in some of the places that you talked about between uh, the Garifunas and other uh, Hispanic communities that are not Garifunas, uh, for example, um, Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, or other Hispanic communities that have lived in that area, in those areas. Um, Diego, remember that uh, we are coming from Latino community, I mean, countries, okay? We're coming from Latino countries and um, of course that we share a lot, we share a lot. And that was one of the reasons why also we use these places. The other thing is, I don't know if I have um, mentioned that uh, um, we, um, we, were, we, were, we went to school, let's say like in Guatemala, Honduras, Nicaragua. Uh, that's why we, um, beside um, speaking in Garifuna, uh, 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 our second language is the is Spanish. So we were, um, there was a point, and I'm gonna talk about Honduras where I'm from. There was a point that it was prohibited for us to speak Garifuna. So we have to like kind of embrace the uh, uh, Latino heritage, the Latino, uh, uh, everything and, and put aside ours because it was prohibited for us to practice uh, our own uh, uh, culture in our countries. And then of course, when we got here, we, we the, the, when I'm talking about all these places, we, were, we also, um, some of these musicians also participated with us uh, because we were dancing, uh, we were not dancing punta, we were dancing merengue, salsa. But in that time, there were no salsa, but merengue, merengue. Uh, Luis Calap of the Dominican Republic, uh, 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 please. Uh, that 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 was what we were dancing. Luis Calap with uh, merengue, and uh, uh, so yes, we share a lot, and we continue to because remember that even though now, I believe that coming to the state, uh, most of us in that uh, in that point we learned that we should not let go of culture and we pick up the pieces and we're still working on it, but we, we're not letting go also what we grew up with. And we grew up with merengue, with, uh, with merengue and all the Latino music. I, I love uh, um, uh, Benny More, uh, 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 a Cuban, uh, um, um, uh, what's the name? Um, uh, Roberto Ledesma. Uh, and, and all those of that era, because that was the music that we were uh, allowed to listen to. And it's, it has to be part of us. It is part of us. And it's our children now that we also have, uh, you know, teach them how to embrace their culture 
And that's why Punta has become very popular within the youngster. But at this time, I don't know how to dance a punta because how it was prohibited for me to dance punta. I know how to dance bolero, uh, merengue, uh huh. But I have to teach my children and my grandchildren that we have more than that, that we have that and we have plus. Thank you, Mirza. Um, someone else has a question. Janet, Janet, please feel free to unmute yourself and ask your question. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. I was just wondering if the Hunts Point Palace is on the site of what used to be the Lowe's Spooner Theater. Uh, the, yes, I think, I think they were both in the same building. I believe they were both in the same building. No. I grew up in that neighborhood. I grew up in that neighborhood, so I knew it when it was the uh, theater, the movie theater. And okay. I was just wondering if okay. that's what it turned into. Yes, it was. Uh, it was. Um, it was right there at the corner. The building is still there. Mm -hmm. The building is still there, right at the corner. I think there is. Um, I don't know. There is a, a um, like a, a curtains. Uh, um, a store in the bottom now of that building. The also the social security office, I think it was at the right, the entrance of 163rd, but Host Point Palace, the entrance was in Sunny Boulevard. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah. there was a there was a Lowe's theater and then right across the street there was a smaller theater called the Star Theater. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, anyone else has a question? Feel free to unmute yourself or type your question in the chat. Well, well not seeing more questions. Um, thank you, Mirfels, for this uh, presentation. I think it was very, very interesting to learn about the Garifuna community and its history in the city and how much shared history uh, you have with other Hispanic communities. And as I said, um, we're going to upload this uh, presentation on our YouTube channel uh, for reference. I think there are very significant places that deserve to be researched and to be looked at in terms of cultural significance, uh, especially because uh, you know the Garifuna community and different Hispanic communities um, related to the Garifuna community have played a very important role in the uh, history of the city. And the places that Mirtha mentioned are relevant for that history. So I think uh, all these places deserve to be looked at, considered and researched. So thank, thank you so you. much everyone for this uh, wonderful um, presentation and for attending. Uh, I look forward to seeing you in other programs and feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. Uh, my email address is on HDC's website, which is hdc.org. I'd be happy to talk to anyone who's interested in learning about our work or suggesting places or neighborhoods that we should be looking at. Thank you again, and I look forward to seeing you all in another time. Thank you very much. Thank you, um, Diego. Thank you. Thank you.